Okay, so welcome back to the next lecture. In this lecture, basically, we'll talk about what are the different kind of coaching skills that is required. We have talked about them a little bit, but we'll try to explain them. And then, finally, we see that how we're going to implement coaching. Okay, so remember we talked about coaching analysis techniques and processes that we adopt for coaching. Okay. And when it comes to implementation, you know that is on the job training basically, because coaching is known as on the job training. So, we see that how this is conducted and we will take one, some examples to explain that and then we will see that how these uh, skills or attributes are demonstrated by the coach while performing the job or while demonstrating these kind of things. right? And, the, and then finally, we will see that how coaching program can be evaluated. Okay. So, the evaluation takes place at different accounts in terms of process, in terms of outcome and also in terms of relationship that is developed between coaches and the coaches. Right? So, we are going to start our discussion on coaching skill for managers and then how we go about evaluation. Look at this picture. Okay. You must have seen this movie, right? Chuck the India. Right? This example I have taken to explain that how coaching happens, okay. how the coach in this film that is named as Kabir Khan okay, selects the captain of the team and how he carries out certain activities. Right. Now, those of you who have seen this movie must have seen the processes which were adopted by the coach to ensure that the team plays well. In the process, you will also find the behavior of the coach, the behavior of the coaches, the kind of relationship that has happened between the two, right? The coach and the team, what kind of processes they have gone through, right? Whether it is related to group group cohesiveness, whether it relates to the interpersonal conflicts, whether it relates to team dynamics, right? So there could be a number of factors which need to be resolved by the coach, okay? And and to start with, what happens that first of all, the coach has to understand the needs and expectations, the problems that is there okay, and especially related to the performance and what needs to be done in order to improve their performance. Right. Then he also need to act in a very fair and impartial manner right, while dealing with the team members. So, you, if you look at this uh, example, you will find that all these things are covered under this. Okay. So, when it comes to coaching skills, you have to see that what kind of coaching skills he had and how he carried out the process to improve the performance of the team. Right? So, we have taken up this example to explain that okay, what role the coach has to play and what kind of a skill he has to reflect okay, in order to see that he is able to perform very well. Right? So, moving further, look at whether we have these kind of characteristics or not. Right? So, first one is communication how he communicates with the people. In this case, you have seen that how he communicates, he talks to the each member of the team to understand their needs and expectations, that they needs to understand their each problems related to the performance and what needs to be done. But in the process also you see that he is able to understand it properly, he is able to provide good feedback what they are, what they do, what they are not, because see we need to identify the requirement and as you remember we talked about the coaching process. So, we started with identifying the need, coaching need analysis. right? So, in coaching need analysis, the analysis takes place at three, le three levels, the individual level that is you are going to analyze the person. So, analyze the person means that you are going to assess his strength and weaknesses. right? So, that he is able to understand the reality, you talked about grow model. So, the most important thing is that you understand the reality, you assess yourself, look at your strengths and weaknesses, see what are the opportunities that you can go and who, what are the, who are your competitors in the process. right? Because in a game, you are supposed to win. right? So, you, the opponents are your competitors okay? and if they play better than you, then you are not going to win. right? So, you have to need to evolve and develop strategies to win. right? So, here you are going to provide feedback that how well you are performing, right? who you are, what your strengths, how it can be overcome, as, sorry what your weaknesses and how it can be overcome in order to win the race. right? And then he used to listen each and every member individually and very carefully to understand these performance related problems. right? 
second issue look at relationship that is another important factor right what kind of relationship you build with the team or other coaches okay maybe another example like for example where a senior person or where a supervisor is going to teach you certain things or coach you about how to perform your job effectively so learning is one thing so the kind of behavioral competencies that you required is very very important right so when it comes to relationship you know that this relationship is built on trust and confidence okay and i have already talked about that this trust is based on feedback system so you are giving feedback you are receiving feedback you try to understand each other you try to assess each other and in the process you are able to build rapport and trust okay because if you are not able to build rapport and trust with each other probably you will not be able to communicate and understand well well each other right so if you look at even that movie chuck the india you can see that how kabir khan was able to build report uh, rapport and trust among the team members within the team and also with him right in how he is able to motivate all the members of the team to achieve superior level of performance right and in the process you are going to work out certain personal issues like there were conflict among the team members they are not talking to each other they were fighting with each other so how are you going to resolve these uh, personal issues to ensure that you are going to have a more cohesive team right and they follow certain norms and standards which is expected from them right and then if you are uh, say facing a difficult situation then how are you going to solve it and if you look have seen the movie have seen that there were really certain difficult situations where uh, the captain had to or uh, the coach had to confront with the team members to find out what could be the best possible option for them to go for right then apart from communication and relationship another important issue is performance since the objective of any coaching program is to improve performance so you have to set performance standards you also see that it is linked with the reward and you also see that if you are not able to do well or if you are not able to experience success how are you going to cope up with these kind of failures right in the process you are able to assess on its strength or weaknesses and see what needs to be done to improve it and ultimately executing right how the job is executed so at many places you have seen that you are going to demonstrate how the job is to be done so right and then you follow through it means that you allow him to do it observe it and then you tell him that okay this is how it is to be done right so with this example i am trying to see that okay what are the various characteristics which a coach should have in order to be effective so communication relationship improving the performance based on the strength and weaknesses overcoming these weaknesses see why, how it is going to be linked with the reward and how we are going to help them by showing them the processes through demonstration other activities to ensure that this job is done effectively so the idea here is that as a coach you are going to act as a skill builder right so any coaching session is basically a skill building session for example if you are going to teach them to play hockey so first of all you are going to tell them the basics okay that is that this is how the hockey would be played right these are the things that is to be done okay and then the idea of this skill building session which is basically at the center of the focus is revolving around certain things so if you look at the periphery you will find that yes you know that what are the activities on which you are going to focus okay you get feedback on a regular basis go for observations have conversations communications okay, right doing field exercises that is very very important it means that you need to demonstrate and do those activities in order to see that how the job is to be done right and then acknowledgement acknowledgement means that yes you have uh, yes realize that okay are uh, kind of, is a kind of recognition that yes things have been done properly or not right so based on these uh, peripheral factors move to the next level of factors in uh, the inside circle that how it goes on right so first is strategic alignment make sure that this skill building session is aimed at those activities which is going to be aligned with the performance of the group or the team right then you are going to frame those activities what are the things that you are going to do then you are going to for idea generation okay what needs to be done how it is to be done here you are also exchanging 
are generating ideas along with the coaches or the other team members right and then you are going to sell it and see that how it is how it is happening okay so sales and service communications means telling them com uh, say convincing them okay then doing it so that they understand the process right and in this is also related to what you call viewing and learning okay so they are going to observe and learn how the things should be done so as a coach when you are going to build certain skills you start with identifying what what kind of skill is to be learned then moving to a feedback system then you ask them to observe it because they have to do it in the process if there are any issues you discuss it and then you ask them to do it and then if you are able to do it you realize it okay that is done properly or not make sure that they are able to do it and observe it and it is aligned with the goals and performance of the organization or the unit to which they belong for example if you look at this is a case the alignment is that yes how everybody contributes they are aligned their activities to ensure that they are able to make a goal so in the process each one has to align their activities individually all the team members right so they need to coordinate their activities in such a way so so that they are able to make a goal right so what kind of uh, strategies you are going to develop in order to align these kind of things right that is very very important so as a coach you are going to develop these skills so that people understands how they are going to coordinate their activities how are they are going to frame certain things what kind of ideas coming to them and whether they are ab able to convince or not and see in the process what kind of learning happens right so with this coach as a skill builder we will be able to identify some of the skills which are very very important right like he acts as a facilitator now the coach is not going to play the game right or he is not going to win the game for you you have to win the game for yourself or you are going to improve your performance the idea is that he is going to act as a facilitator in the sense that he is going to see that how you win or how you improve your performance so he is acting as a moderator moderator in the sense that he is going to allow you to do certain things right he is going to observe it he, he, uh, what you are doing he, he would listen to you he would question to you and then see that whether you are able to do it this facilitation ha happens through observations listening and questioning right and in the beginning he does not make any judgment whether you are good or bad depending upon what your performance is he is going to make certain judgments okay so the idea is to enable you encourage you to higher performance and this happens through observations listening and questioning so these kind of attitude would be required by the uh, coach and through which this he is going to facilitate to make any kind of judgment about the performance of the individual right so when we are talking about coaching skills it is very very important to, to for you to understand that okay as a coach the what kind of skill you require and whether if you have these skills or not now we would also look into some of the competencies right we talked about four different competencies and the relationship is the first one right building a good rapport and atmosphere of trust and confidence right so that coach and coaches are aligned right so this is what we know as co-craft co-crafting the relationship this is the first thing that is very very important okay. so you are going to create a foundation so that you are going to you are able to design a good alliance between the coach and coaches and it is based on your social competence and emotional competence social competence how good you are in building relationship right so if you are able to build a relationship right you have been able to establish a personal bond right you have been able to create a safe and supportive environment you have created been able to create a trusted partnership you have shown mutual respect for each other it does not mean that i am a coach so i am something that is very superior and you are you don't know anything right not that kind of um, say relationship but it is it is based on mutual respect so each one has to respect each other whatever their knowledge is and skill is and then they are allowed to in uh, are encouraged and able to express their concern and advice that is very very important as a coach you allow them to say so that is that is where listening and feedback comes into the picture if you are not providing freedom of expression probably they will not tell you anything whatever is there 
Okay. So, the development happens. Okay. So, it is very very important that you encourage them and allow them to engage themselves related to performance activities. Otherwise, what will happen? They will not be able to do it. So, if you encourage them probably they would be able to voice their concern related to their skill, their motivation, whatever it is and then you are there to facilitate this process through, through observations, through listening to ensure that the person is able to develop himself. So, social competence which is basically related to relationship building, we come to another kind of competence that is very very important in building relationship is emotional competence. Emotional competence is basically is related to what you know as a different term today is emotional intelligence, how emotionally intelligent the coach is. In a sense whether the coach is able to understand and manage his own emotions and the emotions of the others including client, clients and also the coaches, those who are being coached right that is very very important. For example, if you look even at the same way sometimes you will find that the coach confronts with them gets emotional or sometimes you will find that the team members gets emotional right. So, as a coach you must understand their emotions and you also allow them to express those emotions otherwise you will not be able to work it out or otherwise you will not be able to resolve or those emotions unless it is vented out by the team members or the individuals right. So, it is very, very important to have this emotional competence so that you are able to understand your own and their emotions right. So, understanding self and others it is very very important in terms of emotions right. So, what are the factors that is related to emotional intelligence like self management you are able to manage yourself right, you are able to regulate and control yourself and you know what you are in terms of your strength and weaknesses right. So, the idea of uh, having emotional intelligence is to make your coaches understand about themselves able to control their behavior and they realize their strength and weaknesses right. Moving further the next is productive dialogue skills. Okay. Productive dialogue means where you confront and communicate right. So, the interaction is focused on main meaning making, meaning making that yes the whatever you are doing it does make sense for you as well as me both right and the idea is to create awareness among the coaches by identifying partners and value alignments, how they can align their values with each other, how they can develop as trusted partners with each other okay. and here two important factors that I have been talking about is listening and questioning is there right. Listening means what the clients are saying, coaches are telling right, in what context it is being said, whether it is being said in the context of results or not right, what kind of observations are made like hearing, understanding, remembering, interpreting. So, when you listen to somebody you try to understand it and then you rephrase it ok, you try to understand what he said and you might repeat it also to make sure that whether you have understood it properly or not. So, that is the major characteristics of listening. So, listening is one of the important characteristics related to the communication then questioning ok. In order to get more information for the benefit of this relationship you need to question it right. This is what I mean, this is what you wanted to say, this is what you have right, right. So, it could be um, it is based basically uh, related to the learning and the experience of both the coach and the coaches. So, you can ask open ended questions, you can go for closed ended, ended questions ok. So, suppose you ask ok whether you got it yes or no, uh, what is what is your uh, say uh, statement or what is your feedback about this kind of activities. So, that is an open ended question right. So, listening and questioning is very very important and then you have to understand that yes it is related to communication and whatever dialogue happens or interaction happens between the coach and coachee which is it is meant to improve performance and that is why we call it productive dialogue right. Move uh, third important characteristics helping others succeed what is the role of the coach to facilitate the process of growth and development to ensure that you improve your performance right. So, make sure that he is able to translate commitment to structure support and actions. So, what kind of structure is required by the team how he is going to support in the process based on his knowledge, his experience, his wisdom and what kind of activities he is planning to ensure that you are able to succeed it right and that is where framing and reframing and contributing comes right. 
framing means that what kind of mental frameworks you have developed about the problems or the opportunities that is at stake. Right. For example, you have made a framework mental framework that opponents are much more stronger than you. Okay. So, this kind of framework will create a problem which is going to not solve your problem. Right. So, if you think that okay, this is your mental framework, so it would create a challenge for you and you have to see that how are you, what kind of opportunities you are, it is going to provide you. Right. So, you need to reframe this in the sense that you need to create a mental framework for yourself to see that how you can succeed given the opportunities that you have. Right. So, framing and reframing is related to understanding the mental framework or developing the kind of image that you have about the context, about the environment, about the competencies and how you can reframe them okay, to your benefit. Right? Then contributing, how you are going to contribute through communications, balancing the challenge and support to facilitate both learning, growth and renewal. So, you need to make somewhere a balance when you are going to communicate, especially during the coaching session. Right? So, you do, though you talk about the challenge, but you, at the same time you also need to provide such support, because otherwise the subordinates or the employees will not be able to take up the challenge. So, while you are ask them to address the challenge, you make sure that they develop those competencies which will support them to facilitate, right. So, that in the and in the process they would be able to learn and grow themselves, right. So, these are the three important things. So, what we have discussed about communication skills and uh, especially if you look at uh, skill part, two things are very, very important communication skills and interpersonal skills. Right? Communications means when you try to in, uh, interact and relate with it, especially related to your listening like what your writing skill, your speaking skills and your active listening skills. Right? So, we are not discussing in detail, but it is very, very important because you have to have a good listening skill. Right? you should be able to comprehend uh, articulate very well, you are able to speak well. So, these are very, very important things and then when it comes to interpersonal skills, it means it is related to interpersonal relationship, building rapport, trust and confidence is a part of this. So, if you have good interpersonal skills probably you will be able to build rapport, mutual respect it means respect for each other right? and you will be able to focus on the present dealing with the problem as they occur. It means your image interpersonal skills would be should focus on what needs to be done now. Look at the problem and how are going to resolve this problem. So, you have to tell them this is how it is to be done right and in your assessment you have to be very, very objective. So, when you are going to tell them or giving feedback okay, if they are not able to do it properly. So, tell them in a very objective way okay, this is where you are wrong this is what needs to be done right so that they are able to correct them and then based on this you are going to plan about the next set of activities that need to be taken up in order to improve the performance. So, uh, communication and interpersonal skills are very, very important. Now, if you look at the last thing that we are going to discuss today is related to evaluation. right? Now, when we are talking about evaluation, this evaluation takes from two major perspectives from the coaching perspective and from the organizational perspective. See, we are using the same pers uh, same model which we used in uh, uh, evaluating other interventions or learning development interventions like training, mentoring other things. So, when we are going to evaluate the outcome of the coaching, how we proceed further. So, what so far we have discussed that what is the co coaching process, how the coaching is to be done, what kind of a skill would be required by the managers and the manager implement this coaching. So, the coaching is done now it is the time to evaluate the coaching outcome. So, when you are going to evaluate the coaching outcome what are the things that you need to look at it. Okay. Have you identified the criteria for the success or not first thing. So, you have if you have pre specified and predetermined criteria against which this coaching performance would be evaluated, then you are going to make use of those pre specified or criteria for the success of the coaching program. Second thing, have you selected what kind of methodology you are going to use 
okay, which model you are going to use for evaluating the coaching program, right? Whether you are going to use a subjective measure based on the feedback of the coaches and the others, other stakeholders, or whether you are going to use a more objective measure that how much you have invested on a coaching program and what is the outcome, right? Right. So, this, these are the two methods. So, in terms of cost benefits or in terms of objective way you can evaluate. Right. Third is whether the coaching outcome is visible or not. Right. Whether this coaching outcome has made a significant improvement or significant difference in the performance of the individual or not. Right. So, using these perspectives we can go for evaluating whether we are using from the organizational perspective or the coach perspective, coach's perspective. So, the Koji perspective is that they have been able to improve their performance right? on these accounts. They have achieved success in terms of cost benefit it is good and they have achieved those outcomes which significantly contributes to the performance, their own performance and the organizational performance. Moving further, what are the factors, enabling factors? See, first thing that we are going to evaluate is the relationship. And the relationship between the coaching, coaching relationship that is between the coach and coach is depends upon the temperament, the characteristics, the knowledge and skill of both the stakeholders. So, as a coach it depends upon your skill, your ability and what kind of style you use. We have already talked about different kind of coaching skills, the kind of experience that they required and what kind of coaching they are, coaching style they are going to use whether they are assertive or not assertive right depending upon what kind of their knowledge and skill basis. Then we also look at the coaches, are they really motivated, what kind of learning style they have, what is their knowledge and skill base, right? what kind of temperament and characteristics they have in terms of the personality and whether support system is provided or not. So, if you look at there is a positive relationship between the two probably and it is more compatible then you have a better coaching relationship. It means that on this account you are successful. right? So, this is the framework for evaluating the coaching. right? Now, if you look at this framework, you need to identify the stakeholders in the process, who is going to evaluate. right? So, it, it is the coaches, the line managers right? or the sponsors and then the coaches. It could be the top management or the HR managers and then the coaches right? and then you go for documentation because documentation supports your evaluation and this evaluation takes place at three level that the individual level and the group level and uh, the program level sorry and the organization level. Now, if you are going to use this framework it is more objective right and you can identify whether the coaching has been successful or not right. Now, this coaching is evaluated on three accounts and the relationship on the process and on the outcome right. These are the three parameters against which you are going to evaluate coaching. right? So, it is something like this. The parameters are relationship, the process and the outcome. The relationship, the stakeholders are the employees, supervisors, managers. So, you have a triangular relationship, right? You, here you have supervisor, not here, right? So, here, sorry, here you have coaches. So, the employees and coaches is very, very important, and this relationship is triangulated by the supervisors or the line managers. So, if they have been able to build trust, confidence, right? Tr uh, mutual trust, confidence, right? have been able to establish good rapport with each other. Okay, so, these are the parameters related to relationship which could be evaluated and this is evaluated at the group level at the individual as well as the coach level both are going to look at this. Second is the process which basically ta talks about how the co coaching process was carried out. Okay. So, this is based on the behavior of the coach and the coaches. So, what kind of competencies they demonstrate and what are their indicators? 
1, 2, 3, whatever it is. Okay. So, you and then you have documented them through your observations to ensure that you are able to measure it. Right. So, the process is measured in terms of how the, uh, the coaching was carried out right? and this is measured through the behavior of both the coach and the coaches based on the competencies which is demonstrated through the indicators and it is documented. So, that you know that whether the process was carried out effectively or not and finally, outcome what is the result. right? This could be in terms of improved performance, improved behavior or performance. right? Okay. So, these are the three parameters against which it is to be evaluated. So, when we are talking about the criteria, it could be the process, it could be relationship and it could be the outcome. right? And finally, the evaluation takes place at the individual level, okay, organization level and the program. So, individuals are giving feedback about the coaches the sponsors whether they get all the support and resources and that is required and what what was the behavior of the coaches and which is documented then at the organization level okay what uh, who are the coaches how much it costs to them whether the support for them or not for both the coaches and the coaches right and whether it is documented or not and then the program process, process level how the program was carried out by the coaches what was the role of the line managers or the top management and what, what was the role of coaches right and it is also well documented. So, in if you want to understand it you are going to evaluate at three levels there are four stakeholders in the evaluation process and there are three parameters that is relationship, process and outcome and that is how coaching is evaluated to see that whether the coaching was effective or not. Thank you very much. These are some of the examples that I have given here that you can see for measurement. Okay at the business performance level, at the people level, right? how we are going to measure right? at the organization level, ROI, productivity, whether it is cost benefit or not, right? whether it has resulted in new products and services in terms of improved quality, efficiency and time, in terms of people, right? what happens, the satisfactions, complaints, attitude, behaviors. Similarly, you can also see at the individual level, what was their feedback, whether they, whether they have achieved uh, objectives or not and the process level. Right, we also measure it. What, right? How much learning has been transferred? What were the enabling conditions? Okay, what was the cost? You need to calculate it. Okay, then what kind of administrative arrangements were made? So these are the say parameters that could be used at different levels, and the indicators that we can have in order to measure the performance. So this is the integrated model. You have a coach, coachy, right? So you look at the metacognition means the realization about the self and these kind of things. Then Interpersonal communication is also important for them, for each other. And then, if you look at the coaching process, it has to be regulated. Okay, you, you should, and this, all this, actually, this uh, cognition, skills, and expectations lead to the outcome and self-regulatory behavior on the part of this process, and see what actually happens. And also, coaches, for the coaches, the most important thing is the communication skills, which leads to performance relationship and effectiveness of the coaching process. right? So, this is a inter, uh, model and in order to summarize this what we have discussed basically it is very important to see that workers participate in the process, they are able to set their goals for the improvement, feedback is very very important, right? coaches are supportive and helpful, supervisors also know what, what the workers are doing. Okay? And then coaches also need support and training so that they do their job effectively. Okay? And ultimately, we are going to evaluate them to see that you are able to perform well. Thank you very much.